So we're here today on RealAgriculture.com with Bruce Burnett with the Canadian Wheat Board. He is Director of Weather and Market Analysis. Welcome today, uh, Bruce. Good to be here. Okay, Bruce, let's start off by talking about uh, worldwide uh, wheat production and, and ending stocks. What sort of situation are we in right now? Well, we've had a couple of very good years on the production side. Uh, uh, two years ago, we had a record wheat production, uh, a little bit over 682 million tons. Uh, this year, latest forecasts indicate that uh, uh, the production was around 672 million tons, which would be, again, by a large amount, the second largest production ever. So a combination of increased area um, and uh, some very favorable weather globally has helped uh, increase our production levels on wheat uh, fairly significantly from what we're like looking at three or four years ago. So I, I guess when we look back to two years ago, uh, a lot of farmers, all they heard about was how short ending stocks were, and, and now we're talking about a little bit more that were a little bit long in production. So how did we change so quickly? Well, again, a lot of it had to do with the weather, as well as the higher prices uh, encouraged people to plant as much as uh, they could to uh, various commodities, not, not only wheat, but certainly uh, the wheat areas did go up. Um, and we've had some cooperative weather. Uh, generally, uh, the lower production levels are caused by some adverse conditions in some of the major producing areas. Uh, uh, and basically three years ago, that was uh, mostly in the former Soviet Union. Parts of uh, uh, Europe uh, had a disappointing crop. And really, even in North America, our crops weren't all that good either in terms of overall production. Um, and that was on the tail end of declining production for about four to five years. So um, uh, that uh, certainly uh, resulted in tight stocks. Uh, but in the past uh, two years, we've now added about 100 million tons of stocks to world supplies. Uh, and uh, the total wheat trade generally, uh, in other words, the total wheat that gets exports is only around 120, 130 million tons generally. So you can see we've added up a, a fair amount of uh, 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 stocks to the to the situation, uh, and that's caused the prices to come down. So, a more shorter term uh, look. What do you see happening uh, in the uh, world wheat market between now and and planting in the springtime? Well, uh, a couple of things are happening right now that there are bear watching. Certainly, uh, in the futures market, um, uh, we're seeing some buoyancy right now. Uh, that uh, I think most people are attributing to uh, speculative fund money coming in, um, uh, which is uh, helping on the future side, but uh, uh, really in terms of the global fundamentals, as we were talking about before, it uh, really hasn't uh, helped that situation. So these increases in future prices uh, are probably not going to be all that long-lasting uh, unless we run into some weather difficulties as we go into next year. Uh, we've had a few issues uh, crop up that late corn harvest in the U.S. Uh, will result in a lower wheat area because some of the winter wheat didn't get in. Uh, much as a similar situation in Western Canada, we didn't plant as much winter wheat area um, as we did uh, in the previous two years because of uh, some of the late harvest that we had. Um, so events like this uh, can, can, can start to pull down production levels. Um, as we sit here right now, though, uh, looking at the major producers, it still looks like there's going to be uh, reasonably good production for next year. Uh, right now, we would put it in the uh, 635 to 645 million ton range, uh, uh, and that would be, uh, you know, adequate to maintain stock levels at where they are currently, at least anyway. Okay. Uh, more specific to uh, to Durham, a lot of uh, people, uh, viewers of the site, uh, sending me emails asking questions about uh, the sort of maybe bleak Durham outlook. Uh, what, what's happening in the Durham market? Well, Durham uh, is much the same as as, the, as wheat in some respects in that uh, we've had a couple of years of, of pretty good production, uh, especially since Western Canada because it's a smaller crop and uh, Western Canada does uh, uh, have a bigger uh, uh, part of importance in the Dur world Durham market. Uh, we've seen two back-to-back -back, uh, good years uh, in the prairies, uh, and that's built up our stock levels uh, significantly. Uh, we went from essentially at pipeline levels in Western Canada to uh, uh, 
uh, years ago to now uh, 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 pretty significant carryovers on Durham. Um, one of the things about the Durham markets is a specialty type of market. Uh, markets are concentrated in the Mediterranean Basin region uh, and those markets, especially last year, uh, were influenced by some rather large, rather large North African production. Their production levels were up a little bit over five million tons, versus a normal production of about three and a half. So, um, uh, we did have some problems in Italy and some other areas that are going to help make up a little bit in terms of export demand. But overall, it doesn't look like the export uh, uh, market for Durham is going to be all that robust this year against increases in both Canada and the U.S. in terms of production.